Well, hello, everyone. Um, it's good to see lots of faces on here that I haven't seen for a while. Um, and as, as always, good to see a lot of you that are on every week. Um, so as you guys seen, I wanted to talk to tonight about our last big push. And I, I don't really know why I said our last big push, but more of our last motivational, tough love, Vicky venting, not venting, but you know, what I do, what I do, like my, my random rants, right? Um, so this year has been crazy, right? We've all had our ups and downs in our own health and fitness and our own lives and our own businesses. Lots of us have questioned whether or not we're worthy of coaching or we've questioned whether or not we're meant to reach our goal, whether it's physical, mental, financial, whatever. Um, a lot of us, if not all of us, have doubted ourselves in one shape, way, or form, right? And this year has been tough. And we only have a few more days left of this year. And so here's the thing. I am one of those people that let every single emotion affect me. Whether they're good emotions, they affect me good. Then my, I have positive energy. Everyone feels my energy. It's just positive vomit everywhere. If I, Dana just got out of the shower, apparently. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, if I'm sad, um, it affects my weight. It affects my sleep. It affects my business. It affects everything. It affects the way I communicate with others. If I'm hungry, uh, I'm angry, and that affects everybody in the world. And, you, you know, so if you're anything like me, um, your, your emotions affect everything that you do. So that means either if you were having a tough time emotionally, you pulled back in your business, your um, own health and fitness journey has suffered in some way, shape, or form, your, um, your relationships have suffered in some way, shape, or form. <clears throat> and so here's two things. We can either sit back and we can dwell on everything that has negatively impacted us. We could think of, woe is me, I am not happy, I am not okay with X, Y, and Z, I'm just going to sit here. And let me tell you, I've had my fair share of pity parties and I've had to come to a bunch of you who has been, you know, that butt kick that I needed um, to get me back on my feet again. I've, I'm, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with pity parties, but the thing of it is we can't just sit there and, and suffer, basically. We've all been hurt. We've all felt pain before. We've all been in this situation where we didn't like, right? Why, why put yourself through more suffering than you should? Then already, then that's already there. If something happens bad into your life, we either dwell on it and it affects us, affects us even more, or we could do something about it and turn it around and make it positive, right? And I know firsthand, and a lot of you do too, that it's really hard. It's really hard to take a hard situation and make it positive, right? It's really hard. But I promise you, it's possible. And when you do it, you feel better. The situation is better. The outcome is better and you feel better. It's hard work, but it's possible. But we have to do it. We can't just keep dwelling on what shoulda, coulda, would have been. So as a lot of you guys know, Josh Coates, who I um, worked with or work with, um, he once told me, you can control the things that you cannot control by controlling the things that you can control. And at first when I heard this quote, I was like, what in the hell does that mean? I have no idea. That, there's too many of the same words. I don't get it. But the more I thought about it is you can't control everything. You can't control how other people act. You can't control if people say yes or no. You can't control when coaches quit. You can't control whether your um, grocery store has fresh produce on sale. You can't control if the weather is going to be great for you to go on your walks. You can't control all these outside forces, right? But what are the things that you are able to control? You can focus on the things that you are able to control. And in, in the grand scheme of things, it will help you stop focusing on everything that you cannot control because the things that you can control, you are improving on. 
you're benefiting from, you're moving forward with. But why is it more often than not, we focus on everything else that we cannot control, right? We cannot control when um, our coach or our challengers don't check in their challenge groups, right? And what, what first do we do? We get defeated. What am I doing wrong as a coach? Has anyone felt that way? What am I doing wrong to keep my challengers from posting? It has nothing to do with you. What you can do is show up every single day in that challenge group. What you can do is hold yourself accountable. Or accountable. What you can do is be that encourager, that cheerleader, that support that you promised them by becoming their coach. You can show up and you could lead by example. Not everyone that signs up with you is going to be running. Some people, it takes well. I had a lady that <clears throat> purchased a challenge pack in October. She was in my October, um, my challenge tracker app group. I feel like that's the longest word ever. Um, she was in the tracker app and she kept asking me, okay, I'm not ready this time. I'm not ready this time. I'm still drinking my Shakeology, but I'm not physically ready or mentally ready to hold myself accountable in the group. Once a week, I would check on her. November came. I said, hey, we're starting another one. You ready to jump in? She said, okay. But then I wouldn't see her post. I would check in on her. She's like, I'm just not ready. I just can't make that commitment. And at first I started thinking, maybe she has social anxiety. Maybe she's actually nervous to check in. Maybe there's something holding her back. So I said, you know what, as your coach, this is what I'm here for. If you need a vent, if you need a shoulder to cry on, if you need anything, let me know. And she said, there's just too much going on with the holidays and this, this, and this, that she can't commit to working out. And she was ashamed to show up once a week with a workout. She was ashamed to show up if her nutrition wasn't on point. So she said, I need to give myself 100% in this group. So can we push it off one more month? I said, you know what? It's your journey. I will be here whenever you want. This month came around and we were doing another 21 day fix group. I invited her to it. I added her to it. The first two weeks, I did not see one single post and I went to her and she's like, I, I'm just not ready yet. I'm just not ready and I'm really sorry. I don't want you to be disappointed in me. She told me that she actually ended up crying because she felt bad. She thought I was mad at her. She thought I was disappointed and I wasn't. And the whole time I could have been like, what am I doing wrong? What am I doing as a coach to keep her from posting? What am I not doing or not read it, relating to her or not reaching out to her, not coming across right? What am I doing wrong to prevent her from posting? But I kept messaging her. I kept checking in with her. I kept emailing her. I would send her text messages. I would send her funny voice messages. Gage would send her fun Snapchats. And you know what? I messaged her today and I said, hey, I just hope you that, that you had a wonderful holiday weekend. Just wanted to check on you. Not, are you ready to start my January 20, 21 day fix group? Not, are you wanting to jump in my health bed group? I'm not, I'm not sitting here taking it personal that she's not checking in. It has nothing to do with me. It's all about her. But I'm consistently checking in with her because that was my responsibility when she signed up with me as a coach. I didn't sit back and say, woe is me. What am I doing wrong? And play the little pity party violin because she's not checking in. She has her own stuff going on. We all have our own stuff going on. But I can control the things I can control. I can control checking in with her daily. I can control checking in with her weekly or biweekly or whatever. I can control making sure that she knows that I am still a part of her life regardless of if she's in a challenge group, regardless of if she's holding herself accountable, regardless of if she's able to make time for herself or not. That's my responsibility. And those are the things that I can control. And you know what? You know what she said to me today? She told me that she's ready. She told me that she's so excited and she's so ready. And she is so thankful that I've been there through, through the last four months with her. And you know how that made me feel? I, I'm not like, oh, are you, make, are you still on Shakeology HD? I didn't ask that. I was so freaking excited that she is ready. And I didn't take it personal that she wasn't the last couple months. But I was so excited like it was my first time buying a challenge pack because I know that feeling. How many of you guys have, have wanted to do something before but you just weren't ready? 
And then all of a sudden you wanted to do it and you were ready and you're like, this is the best day ever. When you have that momentum and that feeling of energy, like you're ready and there's nothing going to hold you back. It's the best feeling ever, right? Well, when I felt that today, I was like, I, I need to bottle this up, this feeling up. I need to bottle it up and hand it to every single one of my coaches. Because I know right now the holidays suck. I know right now there's depression setting in because of the weather or um, not being able to do the things that you were able to do or finances or, or health and fitness issues or this, this, and this. There's so many reasons why we're getting in our heads and feeling defeated. And so if there was any way that I could bottle that up, that feeling up and distribute it to everybody, I would have, guys. There's no greater feeling out there than that positive energy that someone else gives you. But then I thought about it. And I was like, you know what? Even if I could, I wouldn't be doing you guys a service because I'm giving you something that you can give yourself. I would be taking something away from you. If I gave you something, then you wouldn't have to give yourself. And so instead of filling up your own cup, I would be over here constantly refilling you over and over and over again. But the thing of it is, we can refill our own cups. We can control the things that we can control. We can focus on the positive. There's going to be bad in every single day. I'm not going to lie to you. Unfortunately, that's life. We're not in fifth grade anymore riding our bikes around and all we have to worry about is getting fed peanut butter jelly. That's not life anymore. As much as we'd love it, that's, that's not life. We're going to have negative happen. <clears throat> We're going to have bumps in the road. We're going to have obstacles and struggles. So I'm going to tell you guys, I, if I don't know if anyone has um, been around this long, but I've almost been a coach for five years. For the first four years and three months, I did my goals and affirmations every single day, every day without fail. Well, over the last eight months, I have not. It has made a huge impact of how I believe in myself, how I work my business, how I treat myself, how I talk to myself. I preach all day long about self-love this and self-love that. But when you're not telling yourself the same thing that you tell other people, is that right? I haven't been doing it for eight months, but I tell you what, last Monday I started doing it. And for, for those of you who were in a part of that Josh Coates group, we uh, started turning it into a believing in you group. And I will add anybody in it. We posted the last video last Wednesday. Anyone can join this group. It's, it's free. I'm giving it away because I want everyone to believe in themselves, but it's up to you to watch the videos and to do the assignments. But right now we've been posting our daily goals and affirmations. Tracy, I'll get you, get you hooked up girlfriend. And the sad thing is, and I'm not calling anyone out in here, but the sad thing is when we started doing this, a handful of other coaches said that they needed that too. And the reason I share it in that group, I share every morning when I post my goals and affirmations because it's holding me accountable because I know if I don't do it or if I don't post, I won't do it. Same thing with my workouts, same thing with my nutrition. But the thing of it is, it was kind of like January when everyone was like, my new year's resolution is to lose weight. I want to be in tip top shape. So the first couple days start out strong everyone's in there, right? Everyone was posting their affirmations. The last four or five days, I've been the only one posting. And I'm, like I said, I'm not calling anyone out, but I want you guys to be aware of what you're doing. Because if you feel like you're holding yourself back in any way, shape or form, if there's something holding you back, you got to think about what it is that you're doing or what it is that you're not doing. There's so much time as a coach, we say, you know what? I'm doing everything that I need to be doing, but I'm just not being successful. I'm not successful. I'm not making success club. I don't even have one challenger. I can't reach Emerald to save my life. X, Y, and Z, all of this stuff. But be honest with yourself. Are you actually doing the things that you need to be doing? If you're not reading personal development, how can you give your best version to other people? 
if you're not talking to yourself with self-love, how can you talk to other people and get them to love themselves? If you don't believe in yourself, how can you get other people to believe in themselves? There's so many things that we think that we, sh we, we are doing that we're not doing. And it all involves self-love, personal development, growing within. We leave so much out there because we're like, I don't have time for that. I need to send out invites today. I need to get my posting on. I need to take a million selfies. Is that really helping you build connections? Because in the end, if you don't believe in yourself, if you don't love yourself, none of that is even worth it. You are throwing all that hard work and all that time that you're wasting and all those posts and all those invites out the window. Because we think we don't have time for personal development. I can't get into personal development. I can't read a book. I can't listen to audio. Bullshit. I'm sorry. Oh, was that Caitlin Jen? Dang it. Right when I, oh, it's Rosie. One of the two. I seen a little girl. I'm like, right, right when I dropped the bomb. Hi, Rosie. I'm sorry, girlfriend. Shh, shh, earmuffs. Um, but, but I'm saying there's got to be a time where we're honest with ourselves. You don't lie to your best friend. You don't lie to your children. You don't lie to your significant other. Why do you lie to yourself? Why are you holding yourself back? We all deserve happiness. We all deserve to feel loved. And we can't be loved by anyone else if we don't truly love ourselves. And we can't give love to, hi, Caitlin. And we can't give love to other people if we don't love ourselves. There's so many times that we say, this isn't working because of X, Y, and Z. But I want you to really look inside and say, why is it not working? What am I doing that I can change, that I have control over, and that it could be beneficial, not just for me, but for my friends, my family, and everybody that I'm setting out to help. Life's hard. Life is not easy. Our weight loss journeys, our health journeys, they're not easy. This business is not easy. Anything worth having takes work. It takes effort and consistency. You will never reach your goal if you work at something once a week. You will never reach your goal if you work at something when it's convenient for you. Never. Never, ever. You have to put in the time. And that time needs to be spent on you. Make yourself a priority. You guys give and bend over backwards for other people all damn day. But when it comes to you, I don't have 10 minutes to read a book. I don't have five minutes to write down things that I'm grateful for. I don't have five minutes to write down things of, or words of affirmations. You know what? You don't have time not to do those things. Because you are draining yourself if you aren't filling yourself up. And if you're drained by the end of the day, you aren't giving your best to those that you love. You half-ass your workouts. You half-ass your nutrition. You half-ass your relationships. You don't do your best. And where is that going to get you? Nowhere. You guys have signed up as a Beachbody coach for many reasons. Some of you wanted to be at home with your family. Some of you needed income. Some of you love helping other people. Some of you want to go on vacations. Some of you just want to pay off your medical bills. Some of you want to be able to have more financial freedom or, um, time man or time freedom or, you know, X, Y, and Z. Have that support. Have that family. Have that everything. But the thing of it is, no matter why you signed up as a Beachbody coach, you have a responsibility. And that's first, take care of you. I never, ever want you to think that you need to reach a goal of rank or income or any of that before you work on you. None of that means anything. I don't care if you're making $1,000 a week or $10,000 a month. If you don't love yourself, it's not worth it. It is not worth it. And that makes me feel 
I'm not doing my job. You guys are my family. And yes, I have not. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, I have not given you guys my best in the last couple months. And I'm going to be honest, I haven't been my best because I've been leaving those things out with myself. And I want to apologize because that was never my intention. If you guys know me, you know that I love you through and through. And I've always wanted to give everyone my best. Even if I wasn't giving myself. But because I wasn't giving myself my best, I wasn't able to give you guys my best. So I want to apologize to you guys, but I want you to know that I'm not dwelling on it. I'm not dwelling on it because I'm learning from my mistakes. I learn and I move on. I'm not going to say, you know, 2016 was a shit show. Uh-oh, babies. Okay, no babies. We're good. I'm not going to say 2016 was a mess because we all experience things. We all, I'm, I'm trying not to cry, Keisha, but we all experience things and we can use them as lessons and we can move on. Now, I know one of my biggest things ever since signing up as a coach, January 28th, 2012. Oh my gosh, I feel like that's a lifetime ago. One of my biggest things was I wanted to have integrity in the team. I wanted to have this love, this bond. Because let's be honest, I didn't have a lot of girlfriends. When I worked at a preschool, there was 30 women that we worked with. And there was, it was really clicky. Yes, there was adults. And it was really clicky. And I didn't want that. I didn't want to be a part of that. When I signed up and I, and I found out I could, I could recruit who I wanted to work with. I could handpick the people that I actually want to work with. And you know what? I fell in love with these people. Some of you I've never even met in person. And some of you I have. But I love each and every one of you. And, I, and I've wanted to have that bond through and through in this team. And you know what? I'm pretty damn proud of myself because I look at everybody, even people who aren't on this call. I look at everybody and I'm like, damn, look at us. We are pretty freaking awesome. I got to say, we are pretty freaking awesome. Oh, there's a baby. I got to watch my mouth. Um, but I want you guys to know. <laughs> okay, perfect. Um, I want you guys to know that if there's anything that you need, you need to speak up. Otherwise, people don't know. And if you need help, ask for help because you don't know if the person that you're waiting for to help you is going through shit too. Ooh, I just said I wasn't going to do it, but it's okay. Jackie has earmuffs in, or ear, earplugs in anyway. But I want you guys to know that we've all been through crap. We've all felt that pain. We've all felt that struggle. But you know what? We have each other. And we can move forward and we could keep on going and not give up because for whatever reason, why we signed up as a beach body coach, we didn't just do it for ourselves, right? We did it for our family. We did it for our future. We did it to help others. There's so many people involved of why we became a beach body coach, but it starts with us and it starts with building ourselves up and working on ourselves, being the product of the product, reading personal development, and truly talking to ourselves like we love ourselves. Because I want you to think about it. Would your best friend, your daughter, your mother love the way you talk to yourself if you talk to them that way? Would you say the things that you say to them that you say to yourself? If the answer is no, then you best turn that around right now. I'm not telling you, or I'm not kidding you guys. I've been writing my goals and affirmations since last Monday, and it's changed so much my days. It's changed my patience. It's changed my behavior. It's changed my focus. 
Like when I used to mess up or drop something or stub my toe, I would blame myself. Oh my God, you're such an idiot. Why are you doing this? Blah, blah, blah. You're not good enough. Blah, blah, blah. Really? If your child dropped something or broke it, would you say those things? If your child stubbed their toe and got upset, would you say those things? No. Ever since last Monday, when I've been feeling my mind with positive affirmations and writing down my goals, the things that I'm setting every intention every single day to work on, even though some of them end tomorrow night, some of them end this weekend, they're really freaking big and scary goals. I'm reminding myself every single day what I'm working towards. How has my actions changed? How has my mindset changed? I can't even begin to tell you guys this. And you will never know unless you figure it out for yourself. And you do that. Spend five minutes writing your goals and affirmations down every morning. Not for me. I don't want it for myself. It's going to benefit you. But in return, it's going to benefit everyone around you too. It seriously is a huge game changer. And another thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is wanting to help others. We all have this want to help other people, right? I want to help other people feel good. I want to help other people who struggled with the same struggles that I had or the same pain that I once felt. But how can I do that if I'm not working on myself? How can I convince people to drink Shakeology if I'm not drinking Shakeology? How can I convince people to make time to work out if I'm not making time to work out? How can I convince people to do X, Y, and Z if I'm not doing it? First off, I have a lot of coaches that have come to me recently. They can't work out because of injuries. First off, side note, my girl Teresa She's on her phone and it's all black here, so we can't see her, but she wasn't working out for a while because she had a bum arm. We don't know what happened to her arm, but she couldn't do push-ups. She couldn't straighten it out all the way, X, Y, and Z. She started doing cordifors and she thinks it's actually getting better. I think it has something to do with the fact that you turn into a badass when you're, when you're doing cordifors, but that's neither here nor there. Then I have another amazing coach, Megan who has a bum foot. She has an air cast on her foot and she is unable to work out. And she's like, how can I help other people if I literally cannot work out? A lot of us had had surgeries. A lot of us had been so sick that we can't work out. But the thing of it is, if you literally can't work out, you can share your story. You can share the things that you are doing to better yourself with other people. You can still be inspiring and help them along the way. You can talk about personal development, meal planning, nutrition, support, community, all that stuff that we all know that we need along our journey too. So don't think just because you are unable to do something that you can't help others do what they need to do. But it involves sharing your story. Don't just share the good, share the bad. I want you guys to ask yourself this or answer this with a show of hands. Would you have signed up and be completely honest? And if not, that's completely okay. Or if yes, it's completely okay. Would you have signed up with the coach that you signed up with if they never ever once shared their pain and they just made life look perfect? No, look at all these, everyone's saying no, no. Jackie, I love you. Now, how easy was it for you to connect to somebody when they shared their pain, when they shared their struggle, when they shared something that they were going through and they made you feel not alone? Was it easy for you to connect with them? Do you think that they were scared when they posted about their pain or their struggles? Are you scared? to post about your pain or your struggles. Those are the things that connect you with other people. It's scary, it really is. But those are the way that you make the true connections. Not, hey, I did my workout today, woo woo. That's great, that's great accountability, but that's not gonna build a connection. 
if you're raw and you're honest and you're vulnerable and you're transparent, that's where the true connection happens. You know, I've talked about financial um, struggles before. I've talked about physical struggles, emotional struggles. I am as see-through as see-through can be. I'm like cellophane. I can't believe I just called it cellophane. That's weird. Um, but the thing of it is there's still stuff that I'm scared to talk about. There's still stuff that I hold back because I'm not ready to talk about. And that's okay. No one is asking you to bear your life story right away. Talk about the things that you are healed from. Talk about the things that you are able to talk about. And don't think what everyone else wants to hear. And don't think about the negative feedback that you can get from them. You're not helping, back, you're not helping those people that, that talk negative on, on social media anyways. But you are helping those people that you touch on their pain points. That are going through the str same struggles and hurt as you. Or that you've once been through. But you will never connect with them if you don't open up and you share it. You will never connect with them if you don't love yourself enough to put yourself out there. You will never connect with them if you're not reading personal development or talking to yourself enough to love yourself. Don't think that you have to settle. Don't think that you need to be content in where you are. If you're unhappy in any area of your life, you have control to, you have control to change that. No matter what it is a relationship, finances, your environment, a career, any area of your life that you're unhappy with, you have the power to change. But who's going to make that change if it's not you? It has to be you. But you have to believe in yourself. You have to believe what you're capable of, and you have to believe that you deserve the best. I want you guys to end 2016 with no regrets. I don't care if you regretted not hitting Success Club last month or not going Emerald in September or whatever or completing a program or drinking Shakeology every day, whatever. You have no control over yesterday. You have no control over last month. You have no control over the past 11 months. But you do have control over these last few days. Are you going to give every day your all? I challenge you. I challenge each and every one of you to make these last few days of 2016 the best days of 2016. You can either focus on everything that didn't go right. You can focus on the things that you wish you could have done, the, wish, the things that you wish you could have achieved. Or you can do your damnedest to work on the things that you want to achieve for 2016 and not stop and keep going when it's 2017. You don't need to wait for a new year to do your best. You don't need to wait for a Monday to do your best. You can change right now at 7.05 or 8.05 or 6.05 or 9.05 or 10.05, wherever you are. You can change right now. Tuesday night, you can change. You have the control. You have the power to change. You have the power to change your mindset. You have the power to focus on the things that you want to focus on. You have the power to rock your world. But will you do it? If you love yourself and if you believe in yourself, you will. And if not, you best start reading and writing those affirmations right after we get off this call, girls. Because you all deserve to love yourself. You all deserve to know how wonderful you are. You all deserve to look at yourself in the eyes of everyone that loves you. If we could see ourselves the way others see us, I bet you, you would be holding your head up a lot higher. But we need to start loving ourselves more than other people love us, more than our kids love us, more than our spouses love us. That's a love that no one else can give. So it's up to you and what you're going to do, what you're going to change, and what you're going to focus on. I can give you my everything, and I will, and I will never stop doing that. 
but it doesn't mean anything unless you are giving yourself your everything. Now, over these next few days, I want to know who's making these changes. What will you be doing? What are the things that you want to change that you have control over? If you want to share in the group, that would be great. If you want to message me a private message, that would be wonderful. If you want to make a Facebook Live video and tell the world what it is that you're doing, inspire them all. Maybe you can get a bunch of people to join you. But you have two choices right now. You can either be content just how you are, how life is right now. Or you can do something to change it. You could do something to improve it. But the choice is up to you. So with that said, tonight I'm not going to forget our team selfie. Because that shit's important. And I forgot it last week. So, does anyone have any questions with my ranting session? I know, like, the chat blew up. I didn't see any of it. I'll go right now. Oh, yes. Louise Hay. Louise Hay. Ashley, that book is so awesome. You can heal your life. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let me see. Oh, and as far as everyone that wants to be added to that group after this, um, after I log off of here, I will po post the link to the group and everyone can join if you want to join. Just don't tell Josh Coates, even though he's in the big team page and he might see. Just shh. We, we just won't tell anybody. Oh, Jackie, you're still doing yours. I should have known. How do we share in the comments? Um, Victoria, I don't know what, you're, what that question was for regarding. I want to. In the group? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. You just share, you just share in the comments of the group under the posts. Okay. Cause it's not like a regular one. We can't just put it on there as a post, right? Right. Right. I think it's only admins can post. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Jackie admitted that PD is the number one thing that she puts on the back burner most of the time. And you know what? I bet you you're not alone. Cause that's a common struggle I hear with coaches. Ashley, today I feel like I can't breathe. I feel like I'm suffocating in, the, suffocating in this house. The kids have destroyed it completely and I get scared to post videos because of the background mess. It's literally like brushing teeth while eating Oreos. Anyone have an organized group? Um, <clears throat> hey, Ashley, how many other moms out there? Oh, yeah, Jack, Jackie already answered this. <laughs> but, yeah, how many other moms like there out there feel you? I mean, I don't have twins. I have a seven-year-old son. and. There's Legos all over the place. There's Skylanders, Minecraft stuff. There's Nerf bullets whizzing by my ears when I'm working out some days. Well, that's mom life. Sh sh show it. Whoa. I'm trying to read and talk at the same time. Um, yes, take time for yourself, Keisha. Um, thank you guys for loving on me when I was crying. Ah, <laughs> oh, Dana, I love you. Um, awesome, Tracy, doing it for 30, doing affirmations and goals 30 days straight. That is awesome. Holly, get back to it. I seen that you were committed. It is very therapeutic, um, airing your struggles on social media for sure. Um, you are welcome, Ashley. You are welcome, Melissa. All right. All right, ladies. So with a show of hands, if there's one thing that you can change that will improve your situation, whether it's your own health and fitness journey, your business, your relationships, your environment, anything, if there's one thing that you have control over, who's going to change something to improve it? Oh, Keisha's got a friend. Yes, we, we got one. <laughs> um, Awesome. Good. Good. And I want to see this and I want to hear about it. No matter what it is, there's nothing too big or too small that you can start improving on. So remember that ladies. Okay. I'm going to end the recording. So 
thank you for watching the recording. I know this is going to be my last awkward ending of a, of a team call in 2016.